today's webinar is CRISPR in Agriculture, Context of Improving Water Use Efficiency by Dr. Anindya Bandyopadhyay, Vice President, Reliance Industry Limited, India. So Dr. Anindya Bandyopadhyay is a genome editing specialist and presently leading the synthetic biology and genome editing program in Reliance Industries Limited. Previously, he worked as the global genome editing program lead for Syngenta. He was also faculty and group leader of the molecular biology in International Rice Research Institute, Philippines. Anindya did his PhD from IRI, followed by postdoctoral training in the University of California, Berkeley, and University of Kentucky in the field of plant molecular biology, genome editing, and virology. Research papers, reviews, and book chapters. He is also serving as a reviewer in many renowned international journals. We are very happy to have him have him with us today. So kindly share your screen and proceed with your talk. Hi, am I audible? Yes. Okay, great. And uh, you can see my uh, slide. Slide, right? Yes. So, uh, good morning, all, and uh, thank you, Bayanjin, uh, for inviting me to uh, give this talk. So, I realized uh, almost 4,000 people have registered, uh, which is amazing, and mostly uh, a big number from students and postdocs. So, after talking to the organizers, I decided to uh, change my talk a little bit, where 50% I talk about the basic CRISPR and how this could be applied in different fields. And then I switch to agriculture and uh, eventually a case study with water use efficiency. So if any time uh, I am uh, inaudible or link goes, please let me know. Uh, I will uh, uh, try to do something. I don't know what I will be able to do, but <laughs> I will try. So. Uh, thank you again, uh, Shubhabrata Neha, Shomaf, and especially uh, Neha for introducing me here today. So, oh, it's not moving. Yes. Just a second, let me find a good pointer laser pointer okay so i have divided my uh, presentation in uh, i would say uh, six areas rather two broader areas so when uh, first i start with uh, the history of crispr development then some basic uh, applications uh, sorry basic uh, uh, science behind crispr then i talk about uh, application of CRISPR in different fields, and then uh, recent discoveries and what kind of uh, modifications or advancement is going on in the field. And then I switch to agriculture, how this plays an important role in agriculture. And then finally, uh, give us case study on water use efficiency, how uh, CRISPR could be used in plant to uh, 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 develop drought tolerant plants. So uh, before going to my presentation, uh, so I am coming from uh, Reliance Industries and uh, Reliance Industries is one of the biggest conglomerate in India and uh, uh, with international presence and one of the Fortune 500 companies, uh, the biggest con uh, conglomerate here and mostly three areas uh, Reliance Industry works. One is uh, uh, geo data platform, 4G, mobile internet, telecommunication. This is a big area of Reliance. The second part is uh, Reliance Retail, where uh, diversified uh, product portfolios, groceries, fashion, lifestyle, etc., consumer electronics, connectivity, etc., are uh, involved. And the third, uh, one of the major uh, area of Reliance is uh, 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 providing transport fuels. So uh, basically, um, uh, uh, 
uh, aviation fuel so and uh, supplying petrochemicals to diversified end use industries manufacturing essential industrial and consumer goods using polymers and polyesters so we come under r and d uh, uh, which is within the jurisdiction of petroleum uh, business uh, the third one and our major interest is to uh, develop biofuel so we are working on algal biofuel last six years with state-of-art biggest uh, 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 biofuel algal biofuel plant uh, which is shown here it is in gujarat and our uh, laboratory is in uh, reliance corporate park mumbai so and uh, this is basically algal uh, plant where you see all uh, different types of ponds, greenhouses, and uh, different uh, 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 computational um, um, manipulation of this whole uh, thing. And everything is computerized here. And we develop algal biofuel here and do different kinds of research. And also we are using algae. Uh, after taking out the uh, oil, we are using the remnants for different high value chemical production and as you understand, CRISPR is nothing but uh, applying <clears throat> a new tool, RNA and protein mediated tool for uh, cellular modifications. So we, we try to modify algae with CRISPR for different purposes. And also we are targeting some of our activities in the select agrobiotech research. So this is where I'm coming from. And now uh, let's start with my first uh, area, CRISPR craze, how CRISPR started and the basics and the applications of CRISPR. So, so far, whatever we had uh, was random transformation. That means we can send uh, a gene of interest or a molecular tool inside of a chromosome, which is having DNA, double standard DNA, uh, by random transformation techniques. So it can go anywhere, you cannot control. I, either you do transfection in animal or human cell line, or you do plant transformation by agrobacterium or biolistic, you send it randomly inside of the genome, and uh, then you select for a good event where you get a, a desired trait. But it's random, you cannot control it. So since the advent of this CRISPR-Cas9 discovery, uh, this technology and discovery of CRISPR-Cas9, we have now capability of targeting a particular region of a genome, and we can change that genome selectively as per our will. So this is a big, big discovery in biology, and also I would say one of the greatest discoveries in last one decade uh, for overall technology field. So MIT Technology Review uh, has considered it one of the most important uh, technological advancement in uh, overall uh, technological aspects. So we can do targeted change now. We can target a region, send our uh, genome editing instruments and can edit a particular region. So once this CRISPR was discovered, almost six, seven years back or eight years back, we started seeing a boom in different areas like funding shoot up in 2013 or 14 area like anything, private sector, as well as government, they are putting a lot of money so that this field can progress, progress faster. Also, if you see uh, different kind of publications, then investment by the venture capitals and also the patents, all are shooting up uh, rapidly and uh, very significantly in last a few years uh, encircling this CRISPR-Cas9 field. So CRISPR-Cas9 first discovered by uh, two competing uh, institutes. One is MIT and second one is Berkeley. So I tried to uh, uh, show this. So MIT came up with uh, CRISPR-Cas9 application in eukaryote and Jennifer Dodner's lab in Berkeley, they came up with CRISPR-Cas9 can do editing in prokaryote, the primitive cell types, and uh, in first editing uh, efficiency of CRISPR was shown by Jennifer Dodner's lab in Berkeley. 
And these two labs, then what happened, you could see many big companies started taking license from them. So Dow, Novartis, Horizon, Yet Genomics, DuPont, Intelia, Bayer, uh, Horizon GE, Taconic, many Sigma Ulrich, many bigger companies started uh, sublicensing it and a big craze uh, of using CRISPR for myriad applications started uh, coming up. So in global CRISPR and Cas9 gene market to surplus uh, seven, 7 billion by 2026, this is the recent Bloomberg uh, uh, prediction. So it's quite a craze. Now, what is CRISPR? So, and how it was found? So if we see this uh, whole thing, I would concentrate here, a yogurt plate. So if anybody, whoever has eaten yogurt from shopping mall, uh, there are many markets you can go, you can find small packet of yogurt, which is called dahi in India or card. So whoever has eaten that from a shopping mall, they have eaten a lot of CRISPRs already. So we are eating CRISPR since last 20 years. So what is that? Basically, uh, dahi or yogurt and all this cheese, etc. they are uh, made by application of certain kind of bacteria, right? So these bacteria are uh, used in uh, this uh, dairy industry since long back. And they found one interesting thing that some of the bacteria can resist fudge viruses. So bacteria has natural enemy which are basically fudge viruses. So they can resist those viruses. So scientists started, R&D team of all these yogurt companies started culturing those bacteria only, which has these intrinsic capability of uh, resisting the fudge viruses. And later on, uh, after doing the molecular analysis of those specialized bacteria, they realized these bacteria are having certain kind of strange sequence inside of their genome. So this whole cell is a bacterial cell and you can see a fudge virus is attacking a bacteria. Once fudge virus attacks a bacteria, it inserts its genome inside of the bacteria. So bacteria get sick due to the attack of fudge virus. But one thing it does, it cuts the viral genome and internalize that small uh, fragments of the genome inside of its own genome and keep it as a memory. So next time when that same virus or same group of virus attacks this same bacteria, it already has that memory of attack. And then they uh, uh, make certain kind of tools that tools basically design from this memory and destroy the attacking viruses. So this is nothing but memory dependent uh, uh, bacterial adaptive immune system. So so these memories, these tools, which I'm talking about, this memory dependent tool, these are nothing but later on, people realize this is, these are nothing but CRISPR-Cas9. So these CRISPR-Cas9s, then scientists used to find out uh, that this can be modified in certain way, so it can do targeted gene integration, targeted gene editing. So, the story I was talking about, Danisco was one of the companies of uh, 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 dairy companies, which basically uh, used to culture all these bacteria later on they found and many other companies also. So later on Danisco was acquired by uh, DuPont Pioneer and then uh, and Danisco's famous strain, uh, Choose It Swift. This has been, this is basically a bacterial strain. They sell to different companies, yogurt companies and cheese companies they use, this choose it has nothing but CRISPR arrays inside of their genome. And they, by this CRISPR array, they can uh, get rid of viral infection so that they stay healthy and they make good yogurt and good cheese. So I took some time to describe this uh, interesting aspect of discovery. And later on, it was found that there are different types of CRISPRs that are available in the system, in, in the nature. So mostly uh, people divided into two classes. One class use one RNA and a big protein called Cas protein. It can target DNA, it can target RNA. And there is one, another one class known as class 
one which has many different proteins, uh, different uh, cascade of Cas gene and RNA. So these RNAs are called guide RNAs, so two types. This class two type is majorly used for genome editing purposes. So bottom line is, what is CRISPR? It's nothing but a gRNA, these uh, lines, and this green one, a protein, which is called Cas9. So only two things, gRNA and Cas9, or Cas protein, they get fused together and they can be used for genome editing. How that happens? Again, in this left-hand side picture, I show that this is the Cas9 protein, and this is the gRNA, this filament, and then they go and sit in a double-stranded DNA. And what happens? So first, this gRNA and Cas9 come together, they make a complex. That complex goes and sit in the uh, double-stranded DNA of any organism, any living organism or uh, which has a DNA inside. They can go and sit there and then they cut it. They give a double-strand break. Now cell cannot keep its DNA or its genome as a, a, a break one, or a one which is already got certain kind of break, double standard or single standard or whatever. Now cell wants to repair it by its uh, own repair machinery. And while they try to repair it, they make some mistakes, they bring some mutations. And that mutation give rise an editing. What is that editing? That mutation can switch off a gene to work. How this could be used? If we have a gene which is giving rise a certain kind of protein which is not good for our health, or not beneficial or harmful, you can use this CRISPR-Cas9 system to target that gene and cut that gene in a double stand break, and then cell will, will try to repair and will bring some mutation, then gene will, that gene will not work. So any hereditary, hereditary disease or any disease which is caused by a certain gene, we can basically knock that gene off. We can basically stop that gene from working. So, this is one way, and the other way is, similarly, you take Cas9 and gRNA, make the CRISPR-Cas9 tool, let it get uh, inside of the genome and cut the genome, and then you supply a rectified gene there. Then what happens in the cut region, that rectified gene gets in. So you can insert a new gene from outside, inside of the genome, in a more targeted way by using this tool. So these going in process is known as homology directed repair, HDR. What is the beauty of this system? It's very easy to use, very cheap, only two components are needed. You, you can design this gRNA component and based on that, you're designing the gRNA, go and sit somewhere and do your work. Now you can use many gRNAs, so in one shot, you can target many regions of the DNA, many regions of the genome, and you can do multiplexing. So in one shot, you can do change in many part of the genome or you can change many genes. So this is what I showed here that CRISPR-Cas9 goes sit there, two ways it can do the change. One, it cuts and cell try to repair and bring some mutation and that gene stop working. So gene knockout is possible. And you cut and put a stretch of foreign uh, DNA or foreign gene or gene from any other organism or a gene from the same organism within the same uh, genome, and you can insert that by homology-directed repair by using this CRISPR-Cas9 system. So this was the basic. People identified a bacterial adaptive immune system, which basically uses a thing called CRISPR-Cas9, a tool that can be used for genome editing, mostly change the gene uh, activity or switch off the gene or insert a new gene there. But later on, with protein engineering and different kind of a molecular uh, biology activity, people started to modify this system and they could do many things, such as epigenetic regulation. As we know, apart from the gene and genome, there are other regulatory things which are basically known as epigenome. They can do methylation or certain kind of uh, changes a, uh, or induce histone acetylation or demethylation, whatever, and uh, they can do targeted epigenetic change. So our genome, uh, irrespective of the change in DNA, they can work differently. So one gene can work differently due to these epigenetic factors as well. 
So by a CRISPR Cas9 system, you with a Cas9, you can hook P3, uh, different kind of epigenetic factors. They mentioned here pre 300 LSD1, M MQ1, TET1, etc. And you can even change the epigenetic pattern of a genome. Side by side, you are taking the Cas9 protein and you are taking the gRNA, only two components you are taking. Now in the Cas9 protein, you attach one activator molecule. So you can activate a gene or you attach one repressor molecule, you can repress a gene. So activation, depression, all can happen using this CRISPR-Cas9. Scientists have came out with another new area, which is visualization, tagging, etc., by CRISPR-Cas9. It is more precise, more targeted. So the gRNA, I, I am always mentioning that CRISPR-Cas9, there are two basic things. One is one protein, which is known as Cas, and another one is a gRNA. So you put certain kind of aptamer or attach certain kind of aptamer in the gRNA, and then you hook a fluorescent molecule there. So what happens when you frame that whole tool inside of the cell, you can visualize a particular area of your genome. So uh, a visualization, purification, when instead of fluorescent molecule, if you put a tag like flag tag or biotin tag or PA tag, whatever, you can basically pull that down and uh, you do purification and also by CRISPR Cas9, there is a certain kind of CRISPR Cas9, CRISPR 13 uh, group of Cas9, uh, CRISPR 13 group of uh, 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 system, which can even target RNA, which can make change in RNA. So DNA, RNA, both can be targeted by CRISPR Cas9 and uh, can be modified or adjusted as per your wish. Which exact area you wanted to target, you can do that by designing this gRNA. So uh, if we see the modifications, so different kind of mole molecular modification could be done. So I already mentioned you can do knockout, both the strand break, double strand break. You can do a gene repression by attaching a repressor molecule. You can do activation, you can do tagging, you can do purify, or you just attach a fluorescent molecule with your uh, Cas9 and you can visualize an area, or you can do genome-wide screening, and this CRISPR, this Cas9 protein has two lobe of cutting. You can just uh, uh, delete one lobe, function of one lobe, then it will do a nicking. It will just cut a single strand instead of double strand. So those kind of Cas9s are called nickes. So you can do single strand cut, double strand cut, and many other modifications. So one can see a single, single simple tool of CRISPR Cas9 can do many things, many changes, activation, repression, imaging of genome. And so one of the silver bullets scientists are considering and widely applying in different fields uh, uh, for uh, different kind of benefits using uh, by, uh, with this CRISPR-Cas9 system. So in the next uh, step, I'll go to these uh, applications. So how this CRISPR-Cas9 is delivered inside of the uh, research organism? So either a plant, uh, human, or we work greatly on algae. So I have kept also algae here. So we, we use algae for biofuel and chemical production. So how this CRISPR-Cas9 tool, it's a simple tool, a protein and gRNA could be delivered inside of the human cell or plant cell or algal cell, whatever. So in human, there are two ways people are doing it. One is in vivo targeting, one is ex vivo targeting. In vivo targeting, they're using viral vector, liposome, polymers, peptides, and injecting, or even they can inject inside of the embryo and do certain kind of change. Yes. And ex vivo targeting, what they're doing, they're changing cell lines in the petri plates by CRISPR-Cas9 and delivering it by viral delivery or electroporation, whatever. And once, the cell is changed, this is cultured in a greater extent and is injected in the bone marrow. So bone marrow tran transplantation, uh, if certain kind of diseases happens in the bone marrow, you can replace that by uh, uh, transferring CRISPR edited rectified cells inside of the bone marrow and uh, save that person from a disease. So this is, uh, these are the ways it is used in human. In plant, there are two types, agrobacterium or biolistic mediated transformation. Same agrobacterial or biolistic transformations are taken and uh, 
those uh, and uh, CRISPR Cas9 tool can be introduced inside of the cell. For uh, algae, uh, electroporation is uh, electroporation is done to uh, send the CRISPR Cas9 tool inside of the algal cell and do the change. So there are new uh, areas are also coming out. We know about nanomaterials. So these nanomaterials are very minute and finite particles which can get inside of the cell very easily. Even by passive uh, uh, transfer, you can transfer nanomaterials inside of the cell and you can attach CRISPR-Cas9 tool on the nanomaterial and you can send that nanomaterial inside of the plant cell or animal cell. A lot of research is going on in that area. So we have CRISPR, now we know how to deliver that CRISPR inside of the cell. So one